Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and today I'm back in the southwest with mine operator. They got their mill going today. And so we're going to mill up some of the stuff we got on a video I did previously, and for those of you who want to catch up or may have missed it, I'll put it right after this clip, and then after that, we'll all get on the same page and we can go see what we got in our gold ore we mined from their underground operation. I'm down in the southwest. I got Dan Hurd with me. I was invited down by a YouTube channel called Mine Operator. So we're gonna do some gold mining and do a little gold exploration today. Here's our first look at their portal. They got a nice little head frame they got here and a skip bucket that comes up over the top and will dump into their dump trailer. Looking down the portal here, we're going down to the 45 foot level today. The hope is to bring up about a one ton sample, get it in the dump trailer and take it back to the mill. All right, so these are the guys that invited me down. This is Mine Operator. They have their own YouTube channel. Check them out, they do some awesome stuff. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below, so be sure to click on that. But I wanted to do a little introduction here. This is Chad, Harry, Ron, and Greg. And I'm going to let uh, maybe Chad and Harry tell a little bit about their operation in their mine and um, how you guys got here. Well, thanks, Jason. We're glad you're here. We uh, started out here about seven years ago, and we started prospecting like, like most of you do. And we were using the sore thumb crusher, and we're panning, we're finding gold. So we had sampled inside the mine and started seeing values throughout. Um, just like many hard rock mines, they were shut down during World War II. So we know there's gold in still some of these mines. So we had claimed it up and have been continuing to sample ever since. Very cool. All right, guys, well, what is our plan today? What's our goal? What are, what's our mission? Now we wanna go in this mine and we wanna take a bulk sample of an area where we recently had a channel sample assayed. And we wanna confirm how close our milling equipment can get in its recovery compared to that assay. So we're gonna be using some pneumatic tools uh, to pull a sample, we're going to use our dump skip, and we're going to dump right in to our dump trailer. We try to get one ton. That's our goal today. One ton today. All right, that's a lot of shoveling. <laughs> get after <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, there, I, I'm not expecting him to work. He's going to be watching us. <laughs> I don't work on video. Yeah, that's that's me. So. Somebody's cool. got to be the foreman. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Who's in charge here? Yeah. All right. Well, let's go do it. Let's that's see what we can right. get today. Thank you. All right. So the mineralization changes throughout the vein yes yeah sometimes you might be chasing it on the hanging wall sometimes on the foot wall where we will be pulling a sample <laughs> and, be on the foot wall. and this is the vein here on the wall looks like it pinches and swells mostly pretty broken up quartz huh yes you can see some copper on this side copper staining a little bit yeah going down the hole here what's this about 55 degrees Yes, 55 on the one. Right that's a nice, uh, that's a nice dip. The muck will run in the stope, but it's not vertical, so you're not climbing straight up and down. Here's a little look in some of the old stopes they did. Left some nice pillars. Okay. Done a snake check, but if any got disturbed, they wanted to head back down. Yeah, there's some original stalls installed still. Yeah, they look great. Mine are all rotten. Mine get wet. Yeah. They only last about 10 years. What? Things in the Washington State get wet? Yeah, no kidding, about? right? And rot away? Yeah, when did that start? Yeah. Yeah, you don't tan, you rust up there. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so here's our level i think this is the level we're going to be working on this is our first level okay you call this the 45 this is 45 yes the 45 level what we'll get to where we will be working wow look at this this is this is an impressive operation you got here thanks you guys have spent a lot of time and work down here let me tell you so when we first uh came in this level yeah uh, material from the upper stope literally was up to where my chin is oh wow we were crawling on our bellies so we we mucked out um 
oh, probably a good 15 tons. Wow. From this location. And, and, and it was diluted material. So we had hanging wall and foot wall material in there, but we averaged uh, from about a 10th ounce on some run, sample runs to upwards of a half ounce on separate runs. Uh, we tried a variety of things from just screening and, and milling our screen material and to crushing and milling everything nope. and see, see how well it did. But all the gold's pretty fine. Gotcha. So all, all the muck on the floor that you mucked out was ore. Yeah. That yes. had gold yeah. in it. We ran it too. Nice. Yeah, we ran it. So off, off to your right, you can see one of our, our bulk sample runs here. Okay. And we had gotten it was a, around an eighth ounce to the ton. Okay. So, uh, I'm sorry. It was around one fifth of an ounce to the ton. A fifth, so, so uh, 0.2 ounces per ton. You can see some of these original stalls are still here, but they were burnt. Oh, they did burn. Look at that. Yeah. There was a fire. Oh, hey, things are a lot brighter when I take my sunglasses off. <laughs> hey, you can see. I know, right? And if you get the dust off them, it's even better. <laughs> Let's see if I can change my head. Yeah. There you go. There we are. You can see the vein material. And so probably the fire has changed the coloration of the vein up there. But yeah. what what do you look for as far as good high grade stuff or the better stuff? Is there some sort of mineralization you look for? Yeah, you'll you'll see right up here after we get through this burn section. Okay. We had um, we dropped some material here. You'll notice, you know, we have a lot of reds and pinks, so some iron uh, oxidizing out. <coughs> This was lower grade materials, so Jason's over there surprisingly. It's pretty hard packed, even though it's, it's still really soft. But when we get into purple Definitely material and sugar quartz, we call it sugar quartz because it just falls apart. Results. And I'll show you some coming up. That's usually where we have better gold. We had one assay up to one ounce per ton in here. Okay. And it was in the, the purple um, quartz material. Okay. So we'll go take a look at that. And your, your hanging wall and your foot wall look pretty well defined. Yes, you can see a good slick. Yeah, mud slick down here. Okay, yeah. And so once you hit that, that slick, that nice smooth hanging wall, that's you know you're out of the pay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. You can see the pillars they left. You can get a really good idea of what they were after. Yeah. And it, and it differs slightly from off to the left. So this area, they really liked the material. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You get you get some real deep purples and orange. Oh, I see it. Timber hanging there. Come inside, please. Yeah, so we have quartz monzonite as the main host rock material. Okay. We get copper staining on the hanging wall side, and in some of the workings, the grades are up as high as. Uh, two percent copper. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, but uh, at a different location than here. Okay, but you're you're really mostly after the gold for the pay. Yes. The copper is not necessarily a, a paying Correct. metal for you at this point. At one vein structure in the hanging wall, it is. It's two and a half percent, and the vein's two foot wide. So okay. we're doing some tests on that to see what kind of potential there is, how big of a strike and depth. Okay. Uh, so right below, we, we have paint marks every five feet. So we have a paint mark here, and this represents the 30 foot uh, coming in, and this is a good way to sample a mine, you know, put markers down and, and channel sample or run, you know, bulk samples periodically, and then sure. you can get a good average. Sure. You can see the muck here. This is what it was like oh, all, wow. all, all the way through this. Tunnel here, this drift. So we we moved a lot of rat poop, <laughs> <laughs> and we got a bunch of those little cactus in our hands and our knees. It'll stick on your feet, and then you'll stab yourself in the butt. And it's just a, a brutal. You can experience. see they've been bringing branches and leaves in again. Oh man! So uh, yeah, this is it's a never-ending battle. So you'll end up continuing yeah, to muck this out. Right. Oh drift, yeah, drift. Drift you don't want to get that stuck in you anywhere. Yikes. That's where they're moving forward to. This hurts. This, <laughs> well, this, is that some of the cactus? Yeah, don't yes. eat that. Don't eat that. Okay. Yeah. Just. The, the vein in this mine pinches and swells, and you can see how there's alteration in the foot wall here. Uh, we've taken our channel sample from foot wall to here. We got a, a tenth ounce to the ton um, at this location here. 
and we've ran a small bulk sample and confirmed it. But we, we want to figure out if we can high grade because here you can see how soft the vein is. This is where the majority of the gold is at, it, at this location in, in the vein structure. On the foot wall, everything is, for the most part, like a, we call it sugar quartz. It literally looks like sugar. A few hard quartz pieces that come out without much effort. And then we get usually into some base metal material on the hanging wall, okay. the lighter material. So if Dan's gonna go pan a sample, he wants to get this stuff right in the foot wall. Yes, sir. Okay. If he scooped this up right now and took a pan, that would that would show some nice color. Okay. That's what I'm here for today. <laughs> Dan's looking for California for. gold today. I want shiny. First <laughs> ever California gold. We get wire gold here too. Uh, we get it. We call it coarse pieces, but they're not bigger than 30 mesh. So, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're excited to see 30 mesh here. Uh, yeah. I, I understand completely. Yes. Yeah. But most of it's super fine. I would say half of our gold is smaller than 200 mesh, and the other half is above. So. Okay. All right. All right. Well, how, to dig. Yeah. How uh, do we how do we get this out of here? Okay. We'll show you that next. All right. <laughs> well, I was just informed this is a stall gauge. This is very very cool. It's essentially a way to measure how long your stoles need to be to go between the hanging and the foot wall. And, so and I got to build one of these. And the correct angles at each end is adjustable lengthwise and angle-wise at each end. Very cool. Dan is about to pull out a sample from the vein there and take it up and pan it. And so if you want to see gold right out of that spot, be sure to check out Dan's channel. He's going to have a video out as well of panning some of this stuff and this will be Dan's first ever California gold. So here's a little bit different spot of the vein. We're looking up now but this black here and then this deep purple is what do you call it? Glory. Glory hole. Yeah. This is this is the, this is the, the winning stuff right here. So that is where these guys have found their high grade stuff. If only that was six feet wide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, do you have any idea, like, have you ever high graded sampled this? Is this running like six, eight ounces a ton if you just take that little bit? I, I would suspect eight because north of here at another location, um, the vein is wider and we have about um, six to eight inches of wide of that material. Okay. And we're getting assays from eight ounces to the ton. And we had one up to 334 ounces of gold. Wow. But we chalked it up to the nugget effect. Sure. And so, I mean, oh, if we can duplicate that, we, we would believe it. Yeah. But, you know, you get excited when you see it, but you don't don't be excited for long. Sure. So, I mean, all this this red, red, deep red stuff is the good stuff. Yeah. Matter of fact, where your finger's at, there might be a small piece. There we go. Golden, golden in, the, in the face there. Good possibility. We get a, a microscope on that or a loop and we'll see. <laughs> so in this in this mine, it's the deep purple, real rusty iron oxide stuff. Very cool. All right. Well, Dan has his bucket of rocks. Dan, what are you hoping for here? Uh, ten pounds of gold. Ten pounds of gold. Yes. Ten, All right. It doesn't hurt to hold. And your fifty-pound bucket. Exactly. Hope, hope well, you ten specks of gold, and I will be very happy. Yeah, and this is you. You've high graded some stuff out of the vein. Yep, all from the foot wall. So apparently, that's the high grade stuff. Cool. Uh, left the crappy material for these guys. You that's know? right. Yeah, well, that's how, that's how we do it. Yeah, yeah, good. So you're gonna go up and get that panned out and see what you got. Crush it down, pan it out, and see if we can get a few specks of gold. All right. Well, be sure to check out Dan's channel to see what he got. We're getting our tools down here. We got some air tools. We got some electric tools. We're going to be breaking some rock, putting it in those buckets, and then working. Oh, look at this tool he's got. In case you have a filling that needs taken care of, we can <laughs> drill it out with this. <laughs> you're, in a, you're a dentist now, too, yeah. huh? Dennis Miner. A dentist Miner. And then it's got to go over into that skip bucket and up the, up the rails into the dump trailer. That's the slickest thing you guys have going is you, you can load it from underground and it yes. goes, you don't have to touch yeah. it again until it goes into the dump trailer. Yeah, many times before we've had to you know, handle the buckets, carrying them up. We've, we've come up with different kinds of rigging systems and by far this is the best. Just have it go right in. Yeah. I can't wait to install our track. Yeah. Yeah, having some track in here. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we were talking about putting the super sacks in the dump trailer so it'll dump right into the super sacks. Oh, that yeah. Thing. That'd be handy. And then you could unload them with an excavator or whatever, forklift. Yeah. yeah. 
don't have to go over there to do it. We got a radio. Okay, now what? <laughs> in the bucket. Oh, country rotating. Gotta take the country rotating with a country. Oh, Dad. I So is this going up or is this going back in the hole? No, it's going out. Is it going out? Yeah. We're just going to get it out of the way. Just trying to get to the vein. So we're just breaking out some of the waste rock now. So we can get down on the vein a little more. Five, and how many will this skip hold? 
10. 10. Awesome. Yes, sir. Halfway. <laughs> So there's a nice full skip load, ready to go up top and dump in the trailer. Whew, it's fun mining. I love this mining stuff. There goes our muck. Up to the trailer. Out of muck there. Ooh. Well, here's our hole. This is what we got out today. About a ton's worth. And there was some really, really nice purple spots down here. Right, right along the foot wall here. See how purple that is? And that is where those sulfides have oxidized away. And that is where they were finding some really, really nice gold. Dan panned out some good stuff today. Right out of this spot. And we got some really good stuff out of here as well. So now it's all up in the trailer and we're going to take it down to the mill. Alright guys, well I wanted to quiz you a little bit about this hole we made today. Is this kind of something you normally do in your channel? Is this, was this a good day? I know we talked about the purple and how high grade it was. What do you think is going to come out of this in the mill tomorrow? Tell me your general thoughts here. Well, Jason, this is something we've been wanting to do for a while. We've been stuck building a mill site for a while, and now we're back underground taking bulk samples. And we're confirming some channel samples and drill samples that we have taken over the last few years and sent them off for assay. Now, we want to take some bulk samples and see how close we can get to that target with the milling equipment we have. And this is about the fourth uh, bulk sample like this we've done. And we've been on pause, like you said, for the mill site for, for a while now, so we can finally get back into testing. And we're expecting to see some color on the table for sure. And we're going to try to get a confirmation on how much we're losing on the table versus the assay. Obviously, it's probably going to be something to do with our grinding circuit, but we're still going to give it a whack. Very cool. We've been trying to take a 1,000 pound sample, you know, weigh, it, weigh out our, our sample so we can figure out exactly how much per ton we're getting out of it. And it seems like you guys just like hard work. Yeah. You guys this, is, this is the easy part. <laughs> the, the long days at the mill site trying to get things to work and then breaking down and, and you need parts and you try to order something from another country and it's not coming for months. You know, that, that kind of stuff is what's frustrating. And then when you finally start running, 
more things break and, and this this is this is the easy part. This and gets the frustration yeah. out. Yeah. Two <laughs> days, you know, getting everything prepared, all the equipment worked on and checking the oil and getting all the different things that are wrong with the equipment fired up. And we're only here for a couple hours moving rock and really all we want to do is just move rock all day. Yeah. And yeah. then on the back side then we got time to relax and, and run the material for our tests. Yeah. Very cool, guys. Well, I think what you're doing is awesome. Underground mining is kind of a dying art in the state, so I'm, I'm happy to see you're doing it and bringing it back. All right, check out Mine Operator's channel on YouTube. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Well, we're just finishing up for the day. We've got a little over a ton in the dump trailer, we think. Taking up five skip loads. Dan's been here panning, been finding lots of gold. Check out Dan's channel to see the results of his panning stuff, because I did not get that on video, but I hear the results are pretty impressive. And then stay tuned for our next video where we take this stuff down to the mill, get it processed, and see how much gold we get out of about a ton of rock from this mine. And be sure to check out Mine Operator's channel. Again, I'll leave a link below in the description. So check them out and you can see a lot more of this mine. They've done a whole bunch of work. Really interesting stuff. Well, here's our first look at their setup. Got a little vibrating hopper going down into a... It's probably a... 8 or 10 by 16 jaw crusher there. Old school. But probably still crushes rocks like nobody's business. Falls down here onto this conveyor belt. Feeds up into a crushed ore bin here. Conical crushed ore bin. That's kind of cool. And then another conveyor belt here that meters the material up into a little Stutenroth impact mill. This has plates, stationary plates instead of swinging hammers like ours. It seems to do a good job for them. They run this dry and then out the bottom comes the dry powder and this is a mixing box that mixes the slurry, comes down this pipe to feed this, I think they said it was a Silver Springs shaking table. Kind of a cool little setup here. This has riffles standing up off the table and it probably does a pretty good job of, as a roughing table. And once they get their tailings coming down this black pipe outside, they have a little tiny dewatering screw and sand auger for their oversize. And then they have a baffle system for their slimes into their water pond where they recirculate their water. It's a nice little setup. They've got a slick little system here where they put it in bags and feed it into the ore hopper. And then here is the stuff that we mined on our last video. And so we're gonna run all this through. We've got it weighed out. I think we initially weighed it out at 1,700 pounds. And when I've taken a 100 pound sample, I'm gonna take back to my shop and run it through my system. But this is our ore today, 1,600 pounds through the jaw crusher, through the hopper jaw crusher, into the fine ore bin, through the student Roth, and then down onto the table. All right, we're back with Chad with Mine Operator, and he's gonna run us through the whole mill system you got set up here. All right, so we're gonna run that sample that we took at the mine, and we loaded it into bulk bags. We have a little over 1,700 pounds. We're gonna feed our jaw crusher. We're going to crush that down. We'll probably be able to get through this in 15 minutes. Convey it up and store it at our collection point in our in our bin. Um, at which point we'll shut down the crusher. Then what we'll do is we'll turn on the screen deck, the 25 foot conveyor, and we will feed the Stutenroth mill. Uh, at that point, hopefully we see some gold on the table. All right. Do you have any kind of shooting from the hip estimate on how much 
the grade is on this stuff? Yeah, we should see three to six grams from this material. From this ton? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're looking at maybe somewhere in the tenth to 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ounces a ton, somewhere okay. in there. Okay. Yeah, somewhere in there. Okay, cool. Um, our gold is fine. Uh, I'd say 50%. 50% of it is below 200 mesh. Oh, wow. So the rest of it, uh, nothing bigger than 30 mesh. Okay. And we're hoping to see a gold line on the table today. Yes, sir. All right. If the water's not too dirty. Okay. And where do you typically see that when it's running on the table? On this particular table, we'll see a gold line about an inch, inch and a half up from this, this top rib. Okay. And then we'll notice sometimes uh, a small line on our middlings or our beacon. Sure, coming underneath. And then you have a series of splits here and the tailings run out into that sand screw. And what we've noticed with this particular type of ore, we're getting about 50% of our gold uh, in our primaries and the other 50% in the middlings. Okay. At a later point, you know, we'll need to figure out a way to, to leach our middlings but we could just dry and smelt our primary concentrates right now. And, and right now we're working on trying to cut our concentration ratio on the table uh, from 20 to one to 10 to one. And we're gonna see if we can do that today too. Sure, sure. How long did it take you to put this whole mill together? We spent over a year and a half uh, putting this together. It's been a concept. It all started with the Stuten Roth mill. Uh, we built a foundation and then eventually the pond so that we could start taking samples and, and running them, small samples, and then we just built on it. Uh, we eventually wanted to put a mill together and, and uh, friends of ours thought, well, let's, let's put up a steel building. And uh, so we ended up working together on pouring the footings and doing the rest, running the electrical. We even put up a, a, a power pole outside. and hand dug a lot of trees. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we're pretty good at shoveling. We could have rented a Mini X, but uh, we like to abuse ourselves. You like the hard work. You like the hard work. Well, I have a little bit of experience with setting up mills, and I want to tell you, this is pretty impressive. You guys have done a lot of work. A lot of engineering has gone into this. Uh, it's, it's quite impressive what you did. Yeah. Can't wait for you to see the system run. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. Let's get it fired up and see some gold. All right, let's do it. All right. What kind of motor is that? It's a 1955 Chevy. Okay. Six. It's the stove pole. This one's a, this particular one is a 261, so it would have been on like a big, like one or two ton truck. Okay. And it runs the jaw mm -hmm. for your operation. Cool. Uh, all right, let's try it again.
That was our first leg of the jaw crusher. Now we got to run this fine ore that we crushed up this conveyor, stoop rock, and down on the table. I want to see that gold line. So we just took a little scoop out of the acorns, panned it out. There's some gold there. It's actually 
not terribly fine. It's, I mean, it's fine, but it's not face powder. Nice looking gold there. Good, we got some gold. Well, the table's been running pretty consistent. We haven't seen a gold line yet, but we did get a little bit of gold in the pan. So we know there's some values coming off of there. There's the A cons in the green bucket, B cons in the white bucket. There's some oversized coming off there. And they're trying to figure out a good way to get it finer so they can liberate more gold. But hopefully we see a gold line here before the end of the run. That'd be pretty cool. Just finishing up here. Last little bit going up the conveyor belt. And then we'll see what we got in our cons. Here's the oversized half inch that we'll have to recrush. And we'll get that weighed here and see how much came over and how much came, went under the screen into the mill and onto the table. So a little correction here, we started with 1,798 pounds. I took about 100, so we're at about 1,700 pounds total for the run. And now we're gonna weigh the half inch plus and see how much was taken out from that and everything else went through the mill and on the table. So 400. So you'll just recrush that and run it later. Yeah. And these are the final concentrates. They've got the B concentrates here. They've got three buckets of those, mm -hmm. two and a half, three. And then the green bucket here is the Acons. And this is all, this is all of our Acons for the whole run, right? Yeah. Correct. Yes. Let's so see how much we got in there. Probably about two inches up, from, well, maybe an inch from the bottom. Okay. So 10, 20 pounds anyway. Yeah. That's a, that's a big smelt, dude. Yes. Yeah. All right, here's our Acons. Probably a little less than we thought originally, but there's still half a pan there. So we'll work on getting this pan down and see how much gold we got. Well, this was a kind of a quick and dirty pan of the Acons. But there's a nice little line of gold there. How much do you think is there, Chad? Uh, I would think a gram. Okay. Yeah, about gram, gram and a half maybe. And, you know, for a speed pan that wasn't too bad. We have a lot of fine gold still attached to the black sands and that's why we decide to smelt it and recover it all. And we should have about the uh, same amount of volume in the bees or the middlings. Okay, so you're looking for two, two to three grams total. Yeah, if we get three grams, then that confirms an assay we've had recently. Okay. And that's good news. You cool. Know, being able to get that through our system is our goal and find out what our concentration ratio is. Sure. So you're happy with three grams if that, that'll confirm what you got? Confirm what we got for this sample and then it's on to the next sample. Cool. Awesome. Keep looking. Yeah, keep, keep looking for that rich, rich spot. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Well, we're getting her cleaned up here again and one of the other things we were talking about is if we have roughly two to three grams in what we ran, we only ran three, 1,350 pounds. And so that would increase the value of the ore to about four or five grams per ton, which is about what they were getting on their assays, it sounds like. So that would, uh, that would have this bulk sample square with what they're getting in their assays, and then they can have a real good idea about what they're gonna go mining here in the future. And we haven't even touched the bees yet. You haven't touched the bees yet, yeah. right. The right. primary cons is just primary speed pan. Yeah. In this particular deposit, um, the gold is associated with iron and manganese, and so you cannot, it's very hard to pan the two apart. Right. It'll carry it right out the pan. Right. So if I look at this black sand under the microscope, there'll be gold stuck to a lot of it. Okay. 
So there's still quite a bit of value in there other than what we can see yeah. right you're now in the pan. You're definitely going to want to smelt it. Yeah. Or put it into a little mini ball, ball mill jar or something and try to crush it a little bit more. Yeah, get it real fine. But it's more fun to play with fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a pretty nice little little result, I think, huh? Yeah. That's, that's not bad for a test. Yeah. It's not bad for a test. Yeah. Very nice. Nicely done. Well, these guys are going to work more on getting their cons cleaned up and they'll send me uh, some pictures and videos of what they come up with for a final result on the 1,350 pounds that we ran here today. But I got to go catch a plane. So I'm going to run back to LA, fly back up to Bellingham. And as soon as I get there and I get my sample from these guys, we'll run that and we'll see how much gold I can recover on my equipment with my 100 pound sample I took. So stay tuned for that.